Hi fans of Center of the Isle, I'm your host Steve Schoenberg and you are here for my very first video interview. I'm very lucky to be here with writer, actor, and drag performer, the very celebrated and Tony nominated Charles Bush, who just recently opened uh, his play The Tribute Artist at Primary Stages on 59th Street. So Charles, thanks for being here, I really appreciate it. This is so exciting, it's like the first talkie. <laughs> There's MTV video, right? Yeah. yeah. Congratulations on the tribute artist. The show is fantastic. Of course, I posted my review to Center on the Isle. How does it feel after the opening? Um, oh, well, it's such a relief. You know, we got these wonderful reviews, and you just never know, you know, what it's going to be. And you, have, you know, either you're going to face public humiliation or uh, or be very happy. So I'm just we were very relieved. We worked so hard in this play. It was a very challenging play, many plays, most of the plays I've written, in fact, were, you know, uh, sort of homages to different classic film genres. You know, everything from Vampire Lives at the Ends of Sodom through Die, Mommy, Die to the Divine Sister. But then on the other hand, I, uh, I've also written more, as they say, mainstream comedies like the Tale of the Allergist Wife. And I, I thought it would be, you know, interesting to see if I could find a middle ground and, and use my, um, uh, knowledge of, of classic film and my interest in classic film and, and the pantheon of legendary actresses from the 30s to the 50s, let's say, uh, but, uh, but presented in a, in a more naturalistic comic style. So that was what, what I was attempting. I think your interesting point is you're so famous for the drag performances that can't. The, the Die, Mommy, Die, but then of course you were Tony nominated for The Tale of the Elegy. It was a very, very different kind of um, play. And you know, I, I've most, well, a great majority of the plays I've written, um, I acted in, you know, and so often, you know, the idea of a play comes from you know, what I would like to do as an actor, and what would be interesting for me and challenging for me. <laughs> and I, I thought for a long time of doing a, a I don't know what Tootsie, Some Like It Hot, Victor Victoria kind of story. You know, it's an old convention going back to Charlie's aunt, and I don't know, probably before that, of a man who has to pose as a woman, uh, some kind of s scheme. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I wondered, well, what, you know, what do I have to offer to, from my life experiences and, you know, who I am? What can I offer this uh, very old tradition and, and, and make it fresh? And so what I've, what seems to have happened with the, um, the tribute artists and what sort of developed was that that, that plot line is usually um, about a great contrast or, you know, it's a very butch kind of, you know, straight guy who has to suppose as a woman, and, and the comedy comes from the um, the great his difficulty in, in trying to be a woman, and then other straight men who are attracted to him in drag, and he's and there's this kind of homosexual panic. And Tony Curtis, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's really is, I think going back to Charlie's aunt, it's really the same thing. You know? uh, and then and, and and the interesting part too is where he finds the character finds that. Um, that he can, the more personal he is, the more in a sense himself he is to Adriana's family who hasn't seen her in, you know, 30 years, the more they believe him, the more real he is. So he, so there are places where I'm kind of using Adriana's accent, but it's Jimmy really talking about himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what it actually endears him to, to her. Fantastic job. And obviously yeah. we've known each other now for all almost 10 years. I've seen you in lots of uh, work, and I think it's just great to see you in a different type of show. I think what we would be surprising for your fans is um, you do step aside in the show. Um, you're not always center stage. You've actually written this piece so that each character yeah. has a, a, a nice piece of the pie. So I'm curious about um, what some of your motivations were behind that. And it, um, as you're growing as a writer, if you're looking to sort of convey emotions or different emotions through other kinds of characters. Well, I mean, really, you know, um, um, I think if you look through all my plays, really, uh, I'm usually pretty, pretty generous with, with the other characters. I, I uh, sometimes 
mean, I, I'm a little bit like like Mae West in that in, in her old movies. Uh, you know, everybody's kind of moving real fast, and she's kind of slow center in the middle. And so I, I've always kind of you know surrounded myself with um, with bigger than life comic characters. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember one time Frank Rich, in a, a really great review he wrote, um, said something like um, oh, uh, that I was the cool eye of the, of the storm. It's so interesting about your career as well as, you know, where you are today and so famous and really an icon in our, uh, in the gay world and in the theater world. Um, not that famous. <laughs> is, um, if your mother hasn't heard of me, I'm not that famous. My mother has heard of you. Yeah, of course my mother's heard uh, of you. Okay. So she said, I have to go to uh, primary stages to see Tribute Art if she read the review, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, um, she says I should write for the New York Times, so let's just mm -hmm. let make sure that uh, Ben Brantley knows that. Um, what I wanted to ask you is just sort of growing up, you know, I, I've heard stories about how you know, your, their, your dad was an opera fan, and so you would tell stories through opera, and you had your fabulous Aunt Lillian, who mm -hmm. was a real driving force for you to get yes. involved in theater. Can you tell me a little bit more about that, about um, what it was like just growing up in, in New York, and, and you know, your path to sort of writing that first play and being on stage as a solo artist? Wow. Um, well, I just, uh, I've always, been fascinated by the theater, just from the very beginning. Can't remember where I was, not you know. And uh, I was very, very lucky, very fortunate to uh, grow up in, in, with a family that had artistic interests. And my father, you know, loved um, classic film and, and uh, watching old movies on television. And when I was very young, I, I watched all those movies with him, and uh, and he was very pr proud of. Of sort of my amassing of movie trivia at a very young age, uh, and, then, and then my aunt, my mother's older sister, um, who uh, ultimately adopted me after my mother died, you know, was a woman of great, great insight, and she so uh, got me, and really whatever she was kind of woman that really whatever my interest would have been, she would have thrown herself into if I was interested in being a scientist or, or, or a, anything. I mean, she was rather lucky that, that my interests coincided with, with her, her own. I mean, I think a lot of us are very lucky in the sense that we have sort of an older person in our life who encourages us to get involved. Uh, it's a great the thing. Arts. Well, some people don't have it, you know, they have to find it within themselves. And, you know, I, I in certain sense, can't be too smug because, you know, I, I had this great, great encouragement all along. And, and, and even, you know, the kind of weird career I had in the East Village in the 80s where I kind of first found my w way, part of it was that, you know, a lot of people would just think, oh, you know, playing on a, a play in an in a art gallery, after hours bar, and, you know, in a horrible, scary neighborhood, which Outfit City was in the 80s, you know, why would you want to do that? But to me, it seemed really cool and sort of Sally Bowles, sort of, you know, yeah. cabaret kind of thing to do. And I think that part of that was that um, my aunt, you know, the way my father, you know, but particularly my aunt, just never instilled in me any notion of um, uh, what will people think or, or you can't do that or that's a dumb idea. I wasn't censored at all. So to me, it all just seemed kind of, kind of, wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be cool? How, how much fun? I've heard it said that um, you know, being gay, that you didn't really have many venues and uh, roles for someone like yourself. So you, you went out to find these roles and to create your own. Yes. Sort of, I, you know, I, I think it's very true to say that you innovated you know, the theater in Limbo, at the Limbo Lounge. And then I think you know, it's, uh, it's congratulations to you that you had the guts. You know, I guess people said, um, that you know, it was like this rat hole infested sort of gross. Well, we, 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 you know, Julie Hollis in particular, you know, she, she starts <laughs> really making it sound like you know, or maybe worse than it was, but it, it, it was funky. Yeah. But yeah. you turned it magical, right? And you turned it into a theater and you made it something that, even though it wasn't there, you you wanted to share. But then to me, the sort of decadent ambiance was part of the, the cool part of it. Okay. It really wasn't like, like, who oh, are doing this play in a, in a creepy place. To me, the creepier it was, yeah. the more cool it was. You know, I lived my life by the anecdote. Yeah. 
Right, I'm sorry. Love that.